Hi, welcome to Briones Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and in today's video, we're going to go over the five keys to dinking success. Let's jump right in. All right, so first things first, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to this channel, and also hit that little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we release a new video. We really appreciate it. Like I said in the intro, we're going to be talking about the five keys to dinking success. And the first one that we're gonna start off with is the grip, okay? This is really important because when you are dinking, you have to know what grip to have. So when I'm dinking, I have the continental grip and I'll show that in a picture right now. All right, so the continental grip is the best grip to have because you can hit underspin, side spin, and top spin if you need to, depending on what kind of dink you want to hit, you can hit all those different shots with the continental grip. This is the best grip to use up at the non-volley zone line because you can hit a variety of dinks and shots. And as you know, the game could be really slow when you're dinking and then anyone could speed up the ball at any time and you have to be re ready to defend or counter attack with a volley. And the volley grip is the same grip, okay? You can, you can use the same grip for the volley, which is a continental grip. This is why it's really important to have a continental grip when dinking, okay? So I'll show you here. Um, it's really versatile and I could hit forehands and backhands with the same grip. I don't have to change, ever change my grip. All I have to do is get back, right back into my ready position, okay? get back into my ready position and then I'm ready to go. All right, so make sure that you have that continental grip and you practice with that. And now let's jump into the next key thing that you're going to need. All right, so before we hop into the second one, actually I forgot to mention, this is kind of like part B of the very first key to successful dinking, and that is the grip pressure, okay? This is really important. Just imagine a scale from one to 10, okay? One would be holding the paddle really really lightly and the 10 would be like a really really strong death grip holding it as tight as you can when we're dinking up at the non-volley zone we want to make sure we have good feel and touch because we are hitting soft shots into our opponents or around our opponents non-volley zone okay so i would suggest to have between a three and a four grip pressure so that you're holding the paddle tight enough but it you can feel that and it's and it's loose enough where you can generate good feel and touch all right so here we are dinking and whether i'm hitting a forehand or backhand or i'm taking the ball out of the air as a volley like that or i'm letting it bounce my grip pressure is around a three or four and it really stays in that range because remember these are soft shots i'm trying to hit and my target where i'm trying to make that ball land is not far from me so i want a really light grip pressure again so that i can feel the ball all right so now let's jump into that second tip all right key number two to dinking success is having a compact and consistent stroke okay so by compact let's start with that this pertains to my backswing, my take back, and also my follow through, okay? Now this shot is a soft shot and I'm very close to my opponent. So I wanna make sure that everything is nice and short. So after I finish, even with my, my um, follow through, I can get back into ready position very quickly, okay? And another thing, you wanna make sure that you have in your mind a low to high swing path, okay? I'm trying to get this ball up and over the net and I'm trying to get this ball to drop in front low in front of my opponent's feet, okay? So I wanna make sure that I am swinging low to high and my backswing and follow through are short and compact, okay? Here we go. So again, whether I'm taking the ball out of the air, hitting it with a forehand or backhand, look, look at my stroke, I want you to notice my take back and my follow through is very short so that I can get ready for the next ball right away. Okay, so hit some to my backhand and maybe hit some deeper dinks. Okay, so no matter if I'm hitting backing up or staying up at the line or hitting a, a volley or off the bounce, doesn't really matter. I'm making sure that my strokes and my swing is very compact. 
Hi, if you're really liking this content, go ahead and give this video a like. It really helps us out. Now, let's get right back to the video. All right, so now let's jump into number three, and that is have a solid foundation when you are dinking up at the non-volley zone. No matter what shot you hit in pickleball, your stance is really important and, and the foundation that you build. Starting with the weight at the balls of my feet here, and I have a nice little knee bend, and I am in an athletic stance. I have my chest forward, okay? You, you can see that I'm never just standing straight up like this. I'm always in a good athletic stance so that I can be ready to move left and right and forward and back when I need to, okay? So you'll see all the good players have a really good stance here. I have, you can see my feet are a little bit more wider than shoulder width and whether I'm digging with my forehand or my backhand, I'm ready to go, okay? And you can see I'm kind of, you know, I'm lifting with my legs a little bit as, as I dink. It really helps the feel. And you'll, you'll see a lot of the good players, they actually use their legs for that feel, to get that touch. And you'll notice that as you, as you develop your game and get further into court and hitting third shots, you'll notice that using your legs and coming up like this, that little initiation from the legs up, that's going to really it's really going to give you easy power and it really develops your touch and, and it works on that touch, okay? So have a good solid foundation starting with the weight on the balls of your toes through your legs and then push up and lift up on that ball. All right, so now let's jump into number four and that is make sure that you give yourself margin or clearance over this net, okay? A lot of times I see lots and lots of players Thinking really close or really tight to the net. As you can see these things here, I'm trying to get it really, really close and they find themselves making lots of errors. And why do they do this? Or why are they digging so close to the net? They're doing that because they don't want to pop up the ball. But really, I want you to think of this. It really isn't how close or tight to the net uh, this ball is that makes it a good shot. It's where that ball is dropping and landing, okay? So as you can see here, now I'm going to give myself some margin over the net, about a foot to a foot and a half around that range over the net, but you can see my ball is still dropping in front of my opponent, okay? So now I'm gonna give myself good margin here, okay? So that's some good, that's good height, okay? So as you can see, I'm still clearing the net by, you know, six inches to a foot and a half. And my ball is still dropping well in front of my opponent so that they cannot attack it. Okay. So the key here is, yeah, give yourself some margin and you're going to cut down on a lot of errors. Remember, your, your target should not be a few inches above the net. Get that target a little bit higher. and get that feel, hit it softer so that it can drop in front of your opponent. All right, so now let's jump into the fifth and final key to dinking success, and that is focus on your opponent's contact point instead of where the ball is actually landing. Okay, so let me break this down. When you are dinking or when I have somebody out here dinking with me, a lot of times they are overthinking it or they are trying to make the ball land really short into the kitchen. So I can't attack them or they're, they're really focusing on where that ball is landing and sometimes that actually hurts you more than it could help you. What I want to focus on and when I am dinking against even really great players, I'm just focusing on getting the ball down, making them contact the ball at a, at a low contact point. So whether they are volleying the ball out of the air or they are letting that ball drop in front of them, bounce and then hitting it. As long as they are contacting the ball fairly low, that, that's still a good dink, okay? So we're, we're gonna just dink a little bit here. And notice as I'm dinking to my wife Katrina on the other side, every shot, every ball I hit, whether she's volleying out of the air or taking it off the bounce, I'm making her contact it low, okay? So that's the key to, to dinking success. Here we go.
so it's really easy to focus on a lot of people teach oh you really want to dink short into the kitchen so they can't attack it but really that's a that's a flawed way of thinking okay because that that can make you really tight and draw a lot of errors okay it's okay to dink close to that non-volley zone line and even beyond it sometimes as long as your opponent is is not contacting the ball early and out in front here if you're making them volley the ball low here it's still a good dink okay so let's do a few more okay See, even she can reach that last one out of the air, it's, it's a tough ball to attack because it's, her contact point is, is really below the net, okay? All right, so that was the fifth and final key to dinking success. Hopefully, this was clear and it was really valuable to you. We thank you so much for watching us in this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. For more free pickleball tips, head on to brionispickleball.com. Also, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also hit that little bell icon so that you can be notified each time we release a new video. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next one.